Mays. Mr. Wilker? Here. Mr. Hart? Ms. Cole? Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Mr. Here. Percy. Here. Motion to the agenda is proposed. Second. We have a motion to second on the agenda. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. We have two requests today, and I think we probably could take them both at the same time. With Mr. Chairman. Item one is a request from Waste Management Services Superintendent to initiate the civil service process and fill the position of CMON technician at the Waste Management Services Department. And uh, item number two, you want to do both at the same time, Ron? Yes, you, if you would. Okay, and item it's up to you, but it, they're both pretty simple. Item number two is a request from Traffic Operations Superintendent to initiate the civil service process to create an animal control officer list and fill a vacancy. Does that say vacancy or I'm vacancy? pretty sure that's vacancy. Do you think it's vacancy? I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. <laughs> somebody somebody didn't hit the stock check. Okay, we have a motion and a second on these two requests. Is there any discussion or questions on either one of these? I've okay, got questions. Okay. Um, Larry on the CMOM, is this is this the second CMOM position? Is that correct? Larry Smith, Superintendent Waste Management Services. It is the second position under CMOM. We have the CMOM specialist. And this is a technician who will work under the CMON specialist, uh, primarily working on the condition assessment program. Okay. So this has all to do with meeting the EPA requirements, correct? That's what we're trying to do, yes, sir. Grow local government. Wonderful. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Is that, that's not Mark's position, is it? No, Mark is the CMON specialist. This is a technician okay. Okay. that will work under him. I, um, number two, um, and is this is this the first of? You know, I've kind of lost track of how many different positions we had approved for that. But okay, uh, this this is the this is a full time officer. Okay, and we already have a couple part time, so this hopefully will be it. This okay. should staff us so we can. We're we're out on the street more now because mm -hmm. we don't have to take care of the animals anymore, right. and. We're, we fall behind, or we fell behind before on following up on the spay and neuter and the licensing. This will allow us to do this in Waterloo and Cedar Falls. So is this a second full-time? Yes. Okay. We I already we have were... one. Brian is yeah. there. Okay. I, I guess I had in mind we were going to have about a half dozen part-times and just the one full-time. So I guess I must have been mistaken. Yeah. This was approved in the budget. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Any other questions? Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Those motions passed. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 Well, same, same Thank you.
Depends. Finance Committee Depends. meeting Depends. order. Madam Secretary, if you'd read the roll, please. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Hold motion on. Right motion for the agenda. Second. And minutes. And minutes. Second. We have a motion uh, and a second for the agenda and minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We have an agenda. Who would like to take those travel requests? Mr. Lynn Wood. Do you want me to? Uh, yes, yeah. I do. All right. Number one, Julie Schneider, Housing Director, uh, Class Meeting, HCV, Housing Choice Voucher Program, Management Seminar and Certifications Exam, Little Rock, Rock Arkansas, 922 to 924, 15, not to exceed $1,950.70. Luke Even, Forestry Foreman, Class Meeting, Tree Risk Assessment Qualifications Course in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. 723 to 25, 15, not to exceed $1,055. Lieutenant McGrain and Lieutenant Heller, class meeting ZTCARE1 in St. Louis, Missouri, 831 to 9115, not to exceed $1,420. Second. We have a motion and a second on those three items. Any questions? No, sir. Comments? <coughs> Seeing none. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Mr. Opposed Chairperson, pre authorizations. Sir. We have building maintenance in the amount of $3,321.80 for radio communication for parking maintenance. Building maintenance, $3,000 for 10 containers of R22 coolant for city buildings. Um, amount estimated at $3,744. Oops, sorry. Building maintenance, $3,744 for boiler stack repairs at Five Sullivan Brothers Convention Center. Building maintenance, $16,670 for a 2015 Ford Focus for vehicle parking maintenance. Cultural and arts, $12,650 plus $575 shipping for musical instrument activities for Phelps Youth Pavilion. Leisure services, $15,000 for amusement park tickets sold June through August 2015. Leisure services, $2,780 plus $164 shipping for a 19 by 138 foot black nylon spectator safety netting at Young Arena. Police, $3,609.60. Annual renewal of EDACS fee for Tri-County Drug Task Force. Portable radio fees. Police, $2,676 for burglar and panic alarm for the property evidence building. Sewer, $3,854 for renew three cartograph software and service subscriptions. Traffic, $5,160 for 214 GA 1.75 by 12 inch telespar posts. Second. Second. Uh, I believe traffic did we say one five thousand one hundred and sixty eight. I thought I heard five thousand one hundred and sixty, but yeah, that's five thousand one hundred and sixty eight. Okay. So a motion is second. Any questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. On the Craig, on the Ford Focus, um, I thought they I thought we subcontracted all the maintenance to that new company on parking. Correct. This will be, um, as part of our contract, this is ours to provide them with the vehicle and this will have the license plate recognition okay. on this vehicle. So we didn't really think it would be a good idea to put a $55,000 unit in a used vehicle so we weren't buying a new vehicle to, for the warranty and okay, stuff like by that. Okay, contract we're... Yep. We buy the, the, we buy the vehicle and it will be okay. owned by the City of Waterloo. All right. And uh, Greg, while you're, while you're up there, let me just ask you real quickly, is that what the uh, radio communication is for also, is that vehicle? Yes. And then, uh, Kent, what, will you explain the $15,000 music thing? Sure. Um, that's a project to establish a um, interactive music park outside of the entrance to the Phelps Youth Pavilion. So it's there. 
um, music activities with chimes and drums and so forth that are meant to be outside. Um, they're designed for playgrounds and they have an estimated um, lifespan of at least 20 years before any maintenance would be required. So it would be outside all year round, um, available on a drop-in basis. It would be something that people who visit Marks Park could also um, stop and visit and it would extend our interactive children's activities um, that we offer inside the center to the outside as people approach. So these are, these are things that are going to stay there? Yes, they'll be, they'll be mounted outside. They'll stay there permanently. Um, and uh, we had some grant funding left over from our CLP grant that had originally been uh, earmarked for travel, but we didn't use all that for travel. So that will fund a portion of it, and the balance will be funded with funds uh, from the Community Foundation uh, specified for exhibits. Thanks. Should be very quiet. Any other questions? I have one other one. Uh, Joe? The 2676 for burglar and panic alarm for the property slash evidence building. Is that the building across the street? Joe Libel Police Department. Yes, it is. It's the building across the street. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I would vote aye on everything except the building. that police expenditure because I don't support that project because I never got to vote on it. Uh, we have bills to pay this week, and the bills are three million eight hundred thirty-three thousand six hundred seventy-eight dollars and forty-five cents. Three comma eight three three comma six seventy-eight point four five. Second. We have a motion to second to pay the bills. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Bills will be paid. Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. We have a motion. A second Two motion. motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to this uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Waterloo City Council this Monday, June 15th. Welcome to all of you that are in the audience today and those that might be watching on our public access television. Madam Clerk, would you uh, read the roll for us, please? Ms. Holt? Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mr. Wilford? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Thank you very much. If you would all join me, please, in standing for just a moment of silent reflection. Uh, I, I have just a, a comment to make also, if you will allow me, please. I, I don't know if any of you remember back to when I first got elected mayor at the very first meeting. I, I, uh, when I was sworn in, I had uh, a pastor come and give a prayer for us uh, for that night. He was a very good friend of mine. Very, actually, friend's the wrong word. He's, he's much more than that to me. But it's Dave Bartlett from... Uh, Orchard Hill Church, and uh, as I'm sure all of you know, the, the, the Bartlett family suffered a tremendous tragedy this past week. And so as we stand here tonight, and for the next couple of days, the visitation is Thursday, the funeral is Friday. If you could just keep them in your hearts and in your prayers, I'm sure the family would much appreciate that. So thank you. And if you'll join me for just a moment of silent reflection or prayer, please. <coughs> Thank you very much. Our pledge tonight is going to be led by Miss Michelle Wiener, our
our Chief Financial Officer. Michelle, please. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may all be seated. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as proposed and also the minutes of June 8th regular session. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding either the agenda or the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. We're going to start with a proclamation tonight. And I see LaTanya is in the audience tonight. LaTanya, come on up, please. And if you have somebody there with you that would like to come up, that's fine too. Or not, just come on up. What's that? Oh. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah. Sure yeah. Both of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation to celebrate Juneteenth, uh, Juneteenth celebration. City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation, whereas on June 19th, 1865, Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger landed at Galveston, Texas to enforce President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation and declare freedom for all slaves. And whereas each year thereafter, former Texas slaves and their descendants <laughs> joined in a celebration of freedom and the commemoration became known as Juneteenth. And whereas across our nation, Americans celebrate Juneteenth, a day to reflect on the sufferings of slavery and to remember the joyful declaration of freedom. It is a time of, time of rejoicing with family and friends and a time for planning the future. And whereas this celebration gives us the opportunity to commemorate African American heritage, as we honor the courage and fortitude of our ancestors, we renew our commitment to combat injustice with the triumphant spirit of freedom. Now, therefore, I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim June 19th, 2015 as Juneteenth celebration in the city of Waterloo and acknowledge the many contributions African Americans have made to our great nation. Today is an opportunity to recommit ourselves to confronting injustice wherever we find it and upholding the dignity of all people. By doing so, we protect the freedom and democratic ideals that will keep America strong for generations to come. Latanya, that's yours, and I'm sure you want to say something. There you go. Well, as you Talk know, it uh, started yesterday with a softball game against the Waterloo PD and Tysons. So if some of you were there, you probably know the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us weren't. What was the outcome? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Tyson won. <laughs> I know Tyson won. I sat in my truck though because you know the bugs were out there, and I'm not a bug person. So I'm not a bug person. <laughs> However, um, Melvina just passed out the uh, list of events, and then um, on tomorrow we'll have a town hall meeting sponsored by NAN, and that will take place at Faith Temple, and it will begin at 6:30. Okay. And then on Wednesday, it will be a veterans prayer service, again at Faith Temple, beginning at 6 o'clock. And then on Thursday, the 18th, my birthday, hoo -hoo, um, <laughs> we will have a splash party at Gates Pool, again sponsor, sponsored by NAN, National Action Network. Okay. And that's from 6 to 8. And then on Friday, June 19th, the Sister Soldiers Network um, veteran sister soldiers will have a gospel concert at Mount Carmel and that will begin at 7 and then of course on Saturday June 20th we will have the uh, Peace March starting at the East 4th Street Bridge 9 a.m. marching to Sullivan Park and then all the festivities in Sullivan Park will take place with uh, food and games and bounce houses and youth basketball games and then on Sunday uh, June 21st, again, we will, be, we will be back in Sullivan Park, uh, 11 o'clock service, and then 12 o'clock, uh, various gospel <coughs> artists performing, 
and then more basketball games, more food, more fun, and that will conclude it. You got quite a week going. Yeah, that's I'm tired. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You guys uh, try to make some of those. They they have a great time. And Latanya, thank you for this and all that you do. It's much appreciated. And Mr. Mayor, also. Yes. Latanya is retiring this year. Latanya, how many years have you been at Hawkeye Community College? Twenty-five. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-five. Twenty-five-ish. Twenty-five started, plus. Started when she was nineteen. <laughs> I forgot to add. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, ladies, and you know the drill. You're welcome to stay for as long as you want, but if, if you choose not to, you're not going to offend anybody if you don't want to stay for the rest of the proceedings. So, there you go. With that. Uh, Caveat. Uh, very good. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda items 1A through B5. Also, with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance vice chair. Our bills this week are $3,833,678.45. That's 3,833,678. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding any of the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I had, I had a couple questions uh, about some of the liquor licenses, and I don't think they necessarily warrant uh, you know, making them an individual item. If I could just give a little clarification and leave them on the consent agenda, is that all right? Sure. Okay. The first two, uh, the one-day transfers, could I just give a little overview about what those are, the River Loop Expo and the Five Sullivan Brothers? Well, let me see where are we. Oh, okay. Uh, I, Kelly, can you speak to those, or maybe Joe? Can you? Uh, it's it's kind of a quick question, and Susie would have an answer in a heartbeat, Mr. Schmidt. I'm not sure if anybody does anybody else. <laughs> well, they, yeah, go ahead. If, if you can talk about them, that would be great. Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> just give us your name and, uh, and address. And Nick Hedrick, 200 West 4th Street, Thanks. Convention Center Manager. Okay. This is just a one-day transfer for our liquor license at the Convention Center to go to the Expo Grounds for the VGM Gala. Okay. And then I'll transfer back the next day. Okay. Does that answer that, Mr. Schmidt? So uh, that's the Five Sullivan Brothers Correct. License. And then the Center for the Arts holds the liquor license at that property now, so they would have to transfer theirs off so ours can transfer there. Oh, okay. All right. Yep, that answers that. Okay, thank you. And then I just had Thanks, also, also a quick question about the two uh, renewals on Broadway Street. I mean, I assume that those have those aren't two of our problem facilities over there, but I just like confirmation of that, I guess. Well, tell me which ones they are, Mr. Smith. Two, two D, two D, and two F. Right. Um, quick stop four and Broadway Liquor. 515 Broadway and 821 Broadway. Please. <coughs> Joe Live with Waterloo Police Department. I anticipated this question, so I pulled calls for service for the past year. Taking out traffic stops and alarms, um, the 800 Broadway, 21 Broadway had 33 calls for service in a year, and the other one had 11. So, no, they're not real high. What's, for, a, what's a high number, just out of curiosity? Well, I. Pulled a couple random, um, like the Quick Star in that neighborhood has 125, and I wouldn't consider that high either. Over a course of a year, that's you know, a 10, 12 a month. That's not outrageous. And I didn't take tra traffic stops or anything out of the Quick Star. There's just too many of them to count. Gotcha. Okay. What, what about um, what about violations for like liquor, um, liquor or cigarette violations? Either one of those had any? Not that I that I saw immediately. I think there might have been one public intoxication that came onto the property, but wasn't a result of the property because they don't obviously sell for consumption on premises. Okay. Further? Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Anything else on the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morris. I just wanted to, before vote, uh, I'm going to vote no on both those Broadway ones, basically because of the uh, neighborhood there and the people in the neighborhood um, are um, wanting uh, the proliferation of liquor stores to leave their neighborhood, so that's why I'm voting no on. Okay, and, and I would have much more empathy for your vote, Mr. Morrissey, if these were new licenses. These are not new. These are renewals that have been there for quite some time. I understand that. Okay. Mr. Further questions on uh, consent agenda? Madam um, Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Uh, 
yes on everything but uh, uh, B2, uh, D, and F, and then I have to abstain on uh, M as well. Mr. Lepper? Yes. Mr. Hart? B2D and B2F, no. Yes to everything else. Very good. Motion's carried. Uh, item number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's a request by David Welch for a site plan amendment to amend the conditions of zoning in a C1CZ conditional zoning district located at 1033 Decathlon Drive. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are you aware of any written comments on file regarding this item? Uh, no written comments on file. Anyone in the audience would like to speak either for or against a site plan amendment for Mr. Welch on the Decathlon Drive? A second time. I'm sorry. <coughs> Uh, John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. Um, I don't have any cards in this game with this gentleman, but I, he's always running an extremely clean business. I don't believe he's ever had any trouble down that area. Keeps the place good and, and uh, uh, does a good job there. Also, we wouldn't have to kick in any TIF money or possibly any city money to, to get him in business. So. Uh, and the way that's uh, his building is settling on that property, um, that we wouldn't be a problem as far as visibility. I'm sure that uh, he runs a very clean ship, and because everything's always tucked away very neatly. So that's uh, all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else in the audience that would like to speak either for or against the project? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion and to close the uh, hearing and file the oral comments and also a recommendation of approval of planning, programming, and zoning commission. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrison. Uh, Noel. Didn't staff recommend denial of this? Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. No, we did recommend approval with uh, the four conditions listed on the council communication. Um, which, which we believe uh, helps lay out the site uh, for the automobile sales and for the automobile repair so that it's away from the residential and more, the, more towards a more commercial end of it at the southeast corner of the site. So we did recommend approval with those conditions in place. So had there not been a, a previous agreement that uh, the person that owns this had signed saying that they would not put an auto repair shop at this site? That is correct, um, and those are there was four conditions that were listed on the council communication that were the, the previous four. At that point, um, those conditions were agreed to. The new applicant is asking for the change in the conditions because of the requirements of the Iowa Department of Transportation to run an automobile sales place. They have to have a repair portion um, dedicated to the site. So we worked with them to find what we believe to be an appropriate location on there. There's a small garage in the southeast corner to be able to be used for the repair <coughs> part that will fit in with the neighborhood. And when this was, this condition was written up a few years back, was part of the concern coming from the neighbors, from the residents in that area? I believe we had some concerns from some neighbors to the far north. Um, which is why we wanted to limit the, the repair portions to the southeast. And where are they with this now? We did not have any opposition at the latest request. Were they informed, though? They were mailed notification, yes. Okay. Thanks. Well, can you tell us how long, how long ago they were mailed that notification? Um, I'm trying to see. It went to the... It was on the May 5th Planning and Zoning Commission. So it would have been mailed it uh, 10 days prior to that. Oh, wow. All right. Thank you. Further? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4. Approving a site plan amendment for 1033 Decathlon Drive. Second. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Mr. Jones? Is, is there any time sensitivity, sensitivity to this item? No.
Mr. Welch is in the audience. I guess I would ask him about the time sensitive nature of it. David Welch, A67, Lynn K. Lee, Waterloo. Um, no, there's no you know, immediate need right now. We basically have to do this to meet the requirements for the DOT. It was an oversight back in 2011 when this was put through by another individual. Okay. So we're just basically trying to get these things fixed so we can send in our application. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Appreciate it. Does anybody have questions of Mr. Welch as long as he's at the microphone? Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right. Okay, I lost my place. Where, where, where are we? We've got a motion. Okay, there's a motion and a second. It's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to spend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please, that's a roll call vote. Mr. Lynn? No. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Uh, Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Oh, Mr. Schmidt. I no. No. <laughs> the motion fails. We'll read again next week for the second time. Let's do resolutions three at a time, please. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Hart, I'll start with you. Move to adopt a resolution approving submission of grant application to the HUD Office of Lead Hazard Control and Healthy Homes for a three year grant in the amount of two million two hundred forty five thousand five hundred forty five dollars and match of three hundred seventy thousand two hundred thirty one dollars from CDBG funds and four I move to adopt a resolution to concur with the determination of community planning and development director that the proposed change to the approved site plan to demolish an existing building with an S1 shopping center district and to allow the, for the construction of a new 4,876 square foot Chick-fil-A restaurant located at 1331 Fleming Drive is minor and shall be approved as a minor site plan amendment. Five, I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the exception to the City of Waterloo purchasing procedures to approve piggyback from the Minnesota State bid for the purchase of one 2015 Elgin Pelican Street Sweeper in the amount of $187,103.50. Second. Very good. Council, do you have questions or comments on 3, 4, or 5? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Just had a quick question on number three. Um, I'm just wondering, what's the, do we have an estimate of when that lead paint issue will no longer be an issue? Hasn't lead paint been banned since the 70s? Uh, it has, but there are still a lot of uh, housing units, commercial units that have paint, and therefore we find the, necess the necessity to apply for funds to continue to abate. Okay, I mean, do we have an estimate, Rudy, on how how long that'll take before that's history? I mean, just from a percentage standpoint? No. Maybe? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions on any of those three? Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. So good, the motion carries. Six, seven, eight, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Wilbur? Number six is a resolution approving the involvement of the Waterloo Police Department as a participant in the Iowa Child Abduction Response Team CART program. Number seven is a resolution approving the State Recreational Trails Funds application to the Iowa Department of Transportation for $750,000 with a local match not to exceed $600,000 for the Highway 63 Recreation Trail Extension <coughs> and authorized Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Number eight is a resolution approving contract bonds and certificates of insurance with Mike Dolan Concrete and Masonry Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa, in the amount of $67,494.55 for the fiscal year 2016 Cunningham School Safe Routes to School contract number 851. Second. Any questions or comments on 6, 7, or 8? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir, Mr. Lynn. Um, Jeff's not here. Eric, is uh, that's not... We're not talking about the overpass on this application. We're just talking about at grade trail, aren't we? Eric Thorsten, you're correct. We're talking about the portion of the trail from where it ends now at Parker Street, and then it would run down to the overpass. Okay. Are we still in discussion about the trail on the bridge? I, I, I don't want to say it's a foregone conclusion, but I think everybody supports that. It's, it's a matter of finding funding for, you know, for everything that's necessary for that project. So okay. we're continuing to work on that. And this is one of those efforts to find more funding for the Highway 63 project for the costs that the city would have to pay for. Thank you. Further? Madam Clerk, please. 
Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Very good. Those motions carry. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's do the last three, please. 9, 10, and 11. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrison. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution accepting the bid from Altor for incorporated of Sea Rabbit's Island in the amount of $34,649.13 for the Rice Neshap improvements to the emergency power generator at Waterloo Regional Airport. <coughs> Number 10, a resolution accepting the bid from Failure Early Construction Company. Award of Iowa in the amount of $29,573.54 for the removal and replacement of windows and the performed tuck pointing on the exterior masonry of the General Aviation Terminal Building at the Waterloo Regional Airport. And number 11, a resolution approving mem memorandum of agreement with the Waterloo Community School District to extend technology mm -hmm. leadership, network services, and supplemental technology support services to the city and authorized mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding any of those 9, 10, or 11? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item number 12, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart? Move to receive file consider and pass for the second time an ordinance amending number 5079 as amended City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official, official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4 approving a rezone of certain property for a request by Nicole Cook to rezone 4.43 acres from A1 Agricultural District to R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District for the purpose of constructing one new single family home generally located east of 920 South View Drive. Second. Also, do you have any questions regarding this? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Time sensitivity on this? Uh, I, I don't know. I, they can't build until it gets passed. It's, it's, but, I uh, understand it's a house. That. It's, yeah, it's, they, it's a. It's, it's. She wants to build a new house in, in I, Waterloo. I understand that. I don't. I, I thought well, that's what you, we are want. Are you aware of any issues with this? Is there any objections or anything house. going on with this? There's. There's nothing that anybody knows of, Mr. Jones. But as far as time sensitivity, I mean, we're not aware of any. Uh, but, Mr. Mayor, I think that uh, possibly the consideration is there's a reason for three readings and the reason I think one of the reasons for three readings is to make sure that everybody does get an opportunity to hear about this and if a neighbor happens to be gone on vacation or gone on an extended trip I mean I think that's part of the purpose of the three readings but is there further comment Madam clerk please Mr. Hart yes Mr. Jones yes Mr. Schmidt no Mr. Lynn yes Mr. Morrissey yes Mr. Okay. Welper as well. Oh, Mr. Welper. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What's your answer? Yes or no? I said yes. yes. <laughs> he likes Twice. to see construction. He likes to see houses built in Waterloo, too. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Hart. Move to receive uh, file. I don't think the motion carries. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, we can't suspend the rules. Right. Mr. Mayor, yeah. move to receive file, consider and pass for the second time an ordinance approving request by Seth Green to vacate a plat at five foot wide by approximately 290 foot wide long utility <coughs> easement on the west property line of lot three of Tower Park number five for an ordinance approving. Oh, I already read that. Okay, I, I, I want to go back at one to item number uh, 12. I, I think, Mr. Schmidt, that we can and we should read a motion to suspend. We, if we were to get a unanimous vote, that would pass. Am I not correct? Is that the issue that you raised that we can't uh, have a motion to suspend on 12? No, I, I thought the motion was to suspend the rules. And and you've got to have six. six. Yeah, you've got and to you have only got five. Super majority. So I think oh, that I'm motion sorry. was. I, yeah. I, I missed one. Sure, okay. no, that's fine. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so there is a motion on the floor for 13 uh, for uh, uh, reading for the past the second time. Did I get a, a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Wilford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. And Mr. Jones, uh, hopefully you were going to ask the question. There is uh, some urgency to this. Uh, Mr. Green would like to get started with this. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. All right. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Wilford? Yes. Mr. Hart? <laughs> yes. Motion fails. We'll read it again next oh, week. Oh, me too. D they yes. Have, I mean, Mr. Jones has I to go too. Yes. I didn't vote. Yes. Okay. I thought you did vote. I thought you voted yes. No. Did I? No. It's first that time. Okay. That's fine. 
Okay. This still fails. So we'll take this up for a third ruling next week. I don't I'm know not. You didn't get to vote. What? Did you sure. get to vote, Dave? I did. Okay. Finally. No. I'll take Schmidt. number 14. I'll take number Thank 14. You. Number 14 is a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the third time and adopt an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance Number 5079 to update multiple sections on file in City Clerk's Office, including changes for hard service driveway, parking requirements, minimum garage requirements, freestanding commercial parking lots, driveway and parking requirements for multifamily dwellings, and other miscellaneous updates. All right, there is a motion and a second. I'm going to ask Mr. Schrader to come to the microphone, please. <coughs> I, I think, Eric, what I'd like you to do is, is more than explain what this is. I would like you to please explain what it is. Okay, Eric Schrader, city planner. So, yeah, there's been some confusion and misunderstanding since we had multiple ordinance amendments going through at the same time. Um, so I did send a, a, a memo kind of summarizing, but just kind of a summary of the summary, so to speak. Um, to, to my knowledge, there, you know, there, it, this looks like a fairly substantive amendment since it covers nearly 40 pages out of the zoning ordinance, but the vast majority of those changes are very minor wording tweaks that do uh, very minimal um, substantive change to the ordinance. There's really only, uh, I would say, four key areas that are what I would consider substantive changes. That includes additional restrictions on freestanding commercial parking lots, the requirement that new single family or two family dwellings have a minimum garage. This would not require existing homes if they don't have a garage to add one. Um, the requirement that any new single family or two family dwelling have a paved driveway in the front yard. Again, this would not require any existing dwelling that does not have a paved driveway to add one. Uh, and then can I, uh, can I stop you just a second? I'm sorry you're on a roll Eric, but what, why do we want those things? Why, why do we want paid drivers? It, it's um, There was quite a bit of discussion at that at the Planning and Zoning Commission level, but it's primarily uh, getting into the uh, use of a neighborhood the vitality of a neighborhood and the uh, aesthetics of a neighborhood there. There are also some benefits to uh, ensuring that you don't have a lot of uh, runoff that can cause stormwater discharge issues, um, but kind of getting into the others are the primary ones that we're being discussed. The garage is primarily um, in today's day and age based on just how much stuff generally people are going to have, ensuring that you've got somewhere to put uh, bikes and lawnmowers and um, uh, so that they're not scattered all over you know, the yard, wherever you can stash them, basically. We've generally been seeing very few homes being built without at least some small level of garage. Uh, Habitat was at, you know, one point in time not building garages and just doing a fairly small shed. They've even uh, switched and, and are supportive of this amendment as well. So it's, so it's a very small 14 by 20 minimum standard. It's, a, it's an oversized shed, small single stall garage is all that requirement is. And again, only applies to new construction, not existing dwellings that would not have a garage. Okay, thank you, and I'm sorry to interrupt. That, that, that's okay, and then just no kind why. of. I mean, we're putting it in there. Why are we putting it in there? Just because we want to or because there's a reason, so thank you. Yep, and then the other thing, just to kind of address what it's not, you know, because this amendment was going through kind of the same time as some of those uh, other amendments, this amendment has absolutely, you know, nothing to do or no impact with campers or, you know, recreational vehicles or where they can or cannot park. Uh, with other parking requirements or property maintenance issues. No, none of that is part of this zoning ordinance amendment. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions of, of their council? Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, uh, there is a motion and a second. Uh, with if Council, do you have any further comments? All in favor, I'm sorry, that's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. <coughs> I had a question for Mr. Schroeder. Well, ask Dixon Stokey, uh, uh, 421 Belmont Avenue. Okay, thank you, sir. What is uh, uh, Dixon, ask up here, please. And, and I'm sorry. I'll, yeah, direct your uh, questions up here, please. Thank you. Do we, what happens on an oddly shaped lot where you tear down a house and doesn't have a room for a driveway in the front? 
I, I don't think the driveway has to be in front. The driveway has to be to the garage. If there is a new residential structure built, it will have to have a garage and it will have to have a hard surface driveway. Oh. Well, I really came to say a few words, if you, you don't may. mind. You, you have three minutes. You, you're used 30 seconds. Half <laughs> gone already, yeah. In the interest of economic development, visits to Waterloo should be as pleasant as possible, especially for those who may have reason to want to move here and contribute to our local economy. To appeal to the broadest spectrum of individuals, they should see the widest diversity of styles as possible while they're here. This ordinance would limit our options unnecessarily. The proper hard surfaces called for in this ordinance are defined in another ordinance as um, Portland concrete on gravel or hot asphalt on gravel or something approved by engineering but must be similar to Portland concrete or hot asphalt. Um, the similarities to these two materials are they're waterproof, they contain an aggregate, and they're bound by a cement, either Portland or hot asphalt. Cobblestones don't sound like that, and other attractive materials uh, wouldn't work. One of the stated purposes of this ordinance is to improve aesthetics. But having all the driveways the same and the lot layouts the same is not the way. Some people like living in neighborhoods where everything has the same theme, garage face forward, limited or no access to the back, concrete or asphalt everywhere, but not everyone likes that aesthetic. <coughs> in the interest of economic development, we should craft our ordinance to encourage and facilitate as diverse a selection as possible of layouts, styles, and materials. This ordinance should be amended to encourage permeable pavements, variety, and access to the back, at the very least. Thank you. Thank you, Dixon. And, and for uh, your sake and for anybody else's sake that might be listening, uh, there's an appeal process to any of, of these ordinances. So if you want to build a new house in the city of Waterloo and you want to put down uh, uh, some kind of a nice base with uh, 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 the interlocking tile or something like that, you may go to Planning and Zoning or Board of Adjustment and apply for a, a variance to that zoning ordinance. Uh, I, I can't speak for them and won't, but I would, uh, I would suggest to you that if you have a legitimate hard surface option to either concrete or asphalt, they would take a serious look at that. Eric Schrader, City Planner. Yeah, just a few rebuttal issues. So first off, this ordinance requires that you have a minimum garage. It does not dictate attached or detached and does not dictate location. So you can put a garage in your rear yard. Rear yard. You can put a, a driveway to that rear yard if it's off of an alley or something like that. The heart for a new house construction, the only pavement requirement is if that driveway is in the front yard. It doesn't have to be in the front yard, and if you put it other than in your front yard, it does not have to be paved. So if you build a garage, if you build a new house with a detached garage in the backyard with a gravel driveway off of an alley or off of a side street, those are all permitted. And then regarding the hard surfacing type, um, the, the, the ordinance, do, we're not making any changes there. So that part is what is already currently in the ordinance. And it does have wording about similar types as approved by the city engineer. And that wording has been used to allow uh, such uh, patio type or brick pavers and other types of unique uh, sort of, um, the, the main thing that the engineer is going to look at there is going to be durability and ensure that you've got something that's going to hold up. But he will approve, you know, different types. And if he doesn't, there would be that Board of Adjustment appeal process. Thanks, sir. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Council, do you have any questions or comments to that? Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Schmidt. Um, I'm going to vote no, and this is no disrespect to Mr. Schrader or Mr. Uh, uh, Welber, but I just think that this process could have been handled uh, in a different and better way involving a lot of contractors, realtors, that kind of thing. So I'm going to vote no on this. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welber? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. And Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item number 15, please. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Lynn. I move to reject the bid as received from Peter's construction of Waterloo, Iowa in the amount of $57,444 for the bid to perform door replacement work in the baggage makeup area and the baggage claim area of the airline passenger terminal building at the Waterloo Regional Airport. Second. Very good. Just so that we don't leave any 
doubt in anybody's mind that we're not casting any dispersions on Peters Construction Company. Keith, would you just explain why we're not accepting this bid? Good evening, uh, Keith Gaspar, Airport Director. The reason uh, that we uh, rejected the bids is uh, this is under the fiscal year 15 program. Uh, when you combine the other two that were accepted tonight, we just did not have sufficient funds to complete all three projects. This project will come back as a fiscal year 16 program uh, with one other uh, project identified in that application. So thanks, Pete. You bet. Council, do you have any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regularly scheduled business. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak to Mayor Council, now's the time to do so. Please, please limit your comments to three minutes and tell us who you are. Jim Chapman, 224 Birch. Uh, I think it was a couple years ago, I think we passed what we call the nuisance ordinance. Uh, I think we bring these sheets down every week to the chief. And the same addresses are on there. So I went back to the nuisance ordinance, and the number five on there is disorderly conduct. <clears throat> same addresses, probably the same people, week after week after week are on these sheets, and nothing seems like being done. Okay, thanks, Jim. So. Randy Herod, 111 Highland Boulevard. Um, recently, the city council addressed a request from one of the city's police officers to move outside the accepted distance from the city. An answer was found. However, I'll suggest that while this was solved for the officer, the actual challenge was neither identified nor addressed. That is, that any officer, or any city employee for that matter, would have to consider moving from the city of Waterloo to protect himself and his family. No officer should have to face that kind of decision. <clears throat> Excuse me. As important as that is, there is a larger level of importance. The Waterloo Police, as a force, as well as an individual police officers, represent the safety of the people of Waterloo. A threat on any officer is fundamentally a threat against all citizens of Waterloo. As I understand it, this was not just a threat made in the heat of a moment, which we can all understand. Rather, it was a calculated, cold, almost cowardly threat made from behind closed doors. Obviously, such a threat cannot be tolerated in our community. Besides the obvious fact that our employees, as well as our citizens, must feel safe in their homes, this can have a poor impact on our community as a whole. For example, much has been made about finding new businesses to move here. I used to work at a company where we made decisions about where to put new businesses. And such goals for the city are well justified. But what business would want to move to our city when police officers must move to keep their families safe? Has progress been made in finding the source of these threats? I hope so. If more resources are required to find this criminal, I suggest that contact be made with the office of our Senator Grassley, who is an original co-sponsor of the Raphael Ramos and Weijin Lu National Blue Alert Act, which also creates a nationwide system known as Blue Alert. This should not be allowed to stand as is in our community. With the recent rise in criminal actions being taken against police across the country, here in Waterloo, we have the opportunity to become a beacon of light supporting law and our police force. That's it. Thanks, Randy. Uh, thank you for your words. <coughs> you still have the buzzer, don't you, Mayor Clark? We sure do. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ron Wood, uh, chair of the uh, Waterloo Human Rights Commission. Uh, what we're here to, what I'm here tonight for, is to, to uh, represent the commission and and kind of let everybody know where we're going and what we we've been doing. Uh, first of all, uh, if uh, uh, Director Funches would come and pass these out, please. Uh, we had a meeting with a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey Schott, who uh, represents the University of Iowa Public Affairs for a planning session. Uh, 
In that planning session, we had quite a few different uh, members of the community who gave us a lot of good information. I, uh, what what uh, Director Funches is uh, handing out to you is what uh, Jeffrey Schott <coughs> sent back to us. So at your leisure, you can review and see some of the things that we we hope to attack over the next couple of years. Also, there is another uh, form that was sent out. It's called ACES. And what this is, is childhood development and, and negative things that happen. And uh, we put this together. Uh, actually, Director Funches put it together so that you can see where some of these individuals could be going if we don't do things to further make things better for our youth. Uh, one of the things that we are uh, attacking is they call the uh, ban the box, which means on application forms that you would, if you have the uh, uh, writing that says, are you a felon, we propose that you take that off. What that does not do is give an employer, uh, employer or it does not take away the, the rights of employers to act, ask questions. Uh, it, they still can do this on, on, but a lot of times people get an application, see that, in file 13, and that is against the law. Uh, violence in Waterloo is no, no new news. Uh, we want to partner with council, police, and the community to stop, to stop this destructive violence. How do we achieve these and other goals and priorities? Through education of our commission, our city council, our police, and our community. I would present this example, and I went on web, and I, I took a whole lot of different things and kind of condensed it into kind of a, a, a median type situation. Uh, over 40% of arrests have an individual with some form of mental illness, which can lead to drugs, other different types of things, and violence. Well, how do police deal with, with individuals with mental issues? Very simple. They need to be educated in identifying and instead of jail, perhaps perhaps hospitalization would be the, the cure. Uh, this is the, just the tip of the iceberg in what education will achieve. To further education in our community, the human rights staff has developed outstanding coursework in the, may I continue, Mayor? Uh, in the human try, rights try training. Try to finish up as soon as you can, Ron, please. Yep, yep, I'll be real quick. In the Human Rights Training Academy, we urge the council, the community, to enroll in this course to further your knowledge of human rights. No date has been set, but is in the works. You can call 319-291-441 with more information. Uh, we would love to have a full house. And last but not least, we want to be a proactive commission instead of being reactive in nature. We feel our goal is to preserve and nurture basic human rights and education to achieve this goal. Unfortunately, it does take funding, and we would uh, we would encourage the council to consider funding training our police and personnel that can help make a difference for our youth in our city. Waterloo is a great place to live and raise our families for all of our citizens. Uh, if uh, uh, I will give the uh, council and community uh, monthly updates after our meetings so that you can see where we're going and ask questions as needed. Thank you, Ron, very much. Appreciate it. And uh, just for, for for your information, Ron, and, and everybody's that watches and those that attend regularly, you know, we 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 did bring back the timer. And uh, uh, what I would encourage you to do in, in the future, if you would like to come make a presentation, is call down the day of the meeting, talk to the clerk's office, and we will give you extra time. So uh, you know that's kind of the way we've been handling that. I hate to cut people off, and uh, we had a meeting several several months ago, a couple of years ago even now. The council decided that they wanted me to try to enforce the timer. So I do try the best I can to keep it to three minutes. But if you have if you have more to more to say, uh, call in and request time, and we'll give it to you. Well, well, Mr. Mayor, I was wondering um, several years ago, and Steve, you helped me with this. Um, I thought we used to get like an update from the commission just on things going on maybe a work session, 15, 20 minutes, just to update the council on things that are taking place within the commission. So maybe that would be a better platform um, to hear as work well. Work session type thing? Yeah, yeah. maybe you just an update. Sure. Okay. A little more Very good. give and take. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. John, <clears throat> excuse me, John Sherman, 1715 Robin Road. Uh, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, but uh, just like to throw another 
idea because there's always a lot of different ways that we look at things. Uh, this driveway and the small garage sounds like a tremendous idea. It does make the community pretty. It costs about probably maybe 10000 or give or take five or ten to build a garage and it takes probably 20000 to build a halfway decent driveway and add that to the 30 year contract that you just got done signing to buy that house and then you see why our, we got, us guys sit out there and try to figure out ways to, to make the community more affordable. I don't think anybody that's in the high roller neighborhoods are going to worry about a driveway and a garage because they're going to have them anyway. But when we try to do some of the neighborhoods that could you know, just get by with a, a cheaper house and stuff and then we require that much, then what happens because the money is not there. Thank you. Thanks, John. Mr. Mayor, could I ask a quick question where I'm thinking of? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Lynn. Um, are we pursuing the threats against our police officers? I, that's a police matter. I have no idea, Mr. Lynn. Can we get an update on that? You don't have to do it Probably now. Probably not publicly, but uh, I, I, privately, yes, I'm sure we can. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Uh, Forrest. Good evening. Go ahead. I am Forrest Dillavu, 1725 Huntington Road, in case you don't know who I am. Uh, I was here several weeks ago, and I requested that you folks try and find $5,000 to keep the Young Arena <coughs> open from 6 to 8, scheduled to close in two weeks. Uh, and I'd asked for a report when that happened. Well, it hasn't happened. This week I made some phone calls. I called the mayor's office, and I called the leisure service, or went down to the leisure service office, and I called a, one of the council people. And uh, the answers I got were not that it was solved. The first one I got was that this was a result of budget. And the, the budget was uh, given credit to one of the council people and uh, said that the only way we would change this was through budget changes. And uh, leisure services said something similar. You folks can, can repeat what you said, so in case I missed something or said something incorrectly. And the council person said, confused, I guess would be the best word for me for what they said. But those walkers down there, one of them was sporting his brand new walker here this last week. And he said, have you got any money for us yet? He's a, a regular, been there for years, six to eight. He says they've got money for everything else, everything else. You prove that tonight. You're requesting money for the 63 quarter walkway. $600,000 for the city's share. And you can't find $5,000 for those folks who have used that for years from six to eight. There's something wrong with the city that can't find a few thousand dollars, but they've got 600,000 for an outside trail that can't even be used all year. Thank you. Thanks, Forrest. Uh, Paul, did you distribute your fact sheet at the council? No, but I would, would you please sure. uh, just so, and, and maybe you can go over it uh, um, in answer to Mr. Delvue's comments. Yeah. But, <laughs> I got one there. Yeah. Thanks. Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director. Um, Mr. Dillavu and I have met on a couple of different occasions, and I have taken seriously his challenge to try to find the money somewhere else. I have not specifically found the money. We have met with the Young Arena Committee. We feel we have some ideas. Um, I would call them mitigation ideas. Um, primarily, we're hoping and planning to rent more ice time and uh, we feel we'll be successful in this. If the ice time is rented, that uh, eliminates the need or takes care of the employee's pay for that time. So we anticipate that we will not be closed from six to eight every day or even close to it. We anticipate that when the ice is active, uh, which would probably be September or October through May, that we'll be open most of those days at that early time because Actually, the bill's being paid by those who are renting the ice for private lessons and that type of thing in the morning. The other thing we looked at is uh, what else is available in the community. And we did find that Ridgeway Place at Kimball Ridge is open from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. There's a uh, dedicated Blue Zones walking area. It's marked throughout the building. It's air conditioned and heated. 
um, really a very nice place to walk and they welcome uh, people. One of our staff members was there and said there were a number of people walking and they said they would, they would welcome more. Uh, Crossroads Shopping Center is open for walkers at 6.30 a.m. So there are some other choices out there. We also have outdoor walking. Uh, we checked with the East High and West High and their tracks are both available for public walking. Granted, that's outdoors and it can be raining, uh, inclement weather, that doesn't work too well. We also have the Downtown River Walk Loop, which we um, have good access at the amphitheater, which is real close to the arena if people are wanting to walk in that neighborhood. We have the Lafayette Park Trail Loop that we put in several years ago that's very well used. Um, so during those summer months, that's a, that's a great place to walk. And then we put new trails at Riverview Recreation area and we're installing, <coughs> excuse me, a new trail around Harold Getty Lake. And we have 110 miles of hard surface trail. So, you know, in summary, we, we think there are other options. We are going to try to keep the arena as op open as many hours as we can. And uh, we also have numbers in there for you all to look at. The, the, uh, <clears throat> we've been keeping track of the numbers that are there between 6 and 8. So <coughs> Thanks, you, can, you can look at I those. Does anybody have any questions? I mean, there's, uh, Forrest's got a, he's, he's impatient and, and has a, a plea. And uh, I, I, you know, I have empathy. Uh, but it, it is a result of budget reductions. When we give up money, we give up people and programs. The only other thing I would add is it's not necessarily Mr. Hart's budget in my opinion, because I was asked to find some money, and yeah. I take ex responsibility for that. We did identify this as a possible cut. Okay. So, and it was identified when we adopted the budget. Council was yes. well aware that this this funding was going to go away. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. David Dreyer, thirty-one forty-five West Fourth Street. I have to uh, agree with Forrest. Um, you know, we have. We could spend six hundred thousand dollars on on uh, trails, and we can't seem to fix the roads in town. Uh, something seems to be amiss there. Um, I another thing here is uh, BGM is not adding people to Waterloo, which I thought was part of the TIF thing um, to to get people in business to bring people to town to spend money to to get a tax base that, that helps us relieve our tax base now um, but yet I read in the paper that they're going to move people from a site already in the crossroads which is already in Waterloo <coughs> that's paying taxes to go to a site that we gave them seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to pay someone that owns that property that's part of VGM from my understanding. Uh, so we gave them money to have them buy something from themselves. That doesn't make any sense. Um, on uh, item 13 uh, and A2, A3, we are uh, abandoning, or we are abandoning, I guess, utility easements. My question there is that what happens when those if there is a utility running through the area, uh, we abandoned it. We have no right to go in there without paying those people to tear up that property to fix that utility. Is that true? And then uh, uh, the TIF transfer, has anything been resolved or, or understood about are we transferring money from one account to another to make a, a, another district look better? And then that district that was transferred from looks bad, so now we got to transfer money back or from a different budget, whatever. Thank you. Thanks, David. And you had several questions in there that uh, you know we we would like to answer for you. I don't think any of us sitting here uh, I can't answer them. If you'll come in during the day, come to my office, go to the to the uh, chief financial officer's office, chief, go to the planning department. We'll try to get all of those questions answered for you. Okay, okay. I can do that. Thank you. Steve Murphy, 124 Terrace Drive. I, I guess I'm um, trying to help out my good friend, uh, uh, Mr. Forrest Olivu. 
How, how about this? Let's be the city that cares enough about walking that we'll move our mowers a little farther away. Let's get the mowers out of the garage that we rent from uh, JSA, move it to where we used to keep the dogs. That's got to be empty. And then let's quit paying rent on that. That's more than enough for, uh, that's $12,000 a year to store mowers. We need 5000 for the walking. Seems like we can make the math work out. We need to buy a new trailer to haul the mowers. We got a little money in the budget for that. Specifically, I'm asking for the dollars and cents of why we're paying to, sto to store mowers and snowblowers and small equipment when we have buildings that we flat out own and would not have to pay to store. So, I'll, you know, a couple weeks we could work that out. I'd be, you have my email address and I'd be happy to, I want to see the numbers mm -hmm. about why it makes sense to rent storage for mowers and throw walkers in a blue city, throw walkers out of a free walking arena. Thanks. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Morrissey? Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to make mention of the fact that it w it's very encouraging to see uh, in conversations with uh, Noel that the uh, Wonder Bread uh, project development is moving forward, and I look forward to seeing in a couple weeks a uh, resolution to bring it uh, uh, up to City Council. Mr. Hart? Motion to receive and file oral comments and adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.